everybody, I'm Adriana and welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to be talking with you guys today as we dig into another Bible study with me. And right now we are about to start on the book of Galatians. So today we're going to be going through Galatians 1. I'm super excited about it and I'm just pumped to get into another Bible study with me series. Join on the fun and get your Bibles open and let's get to reading. Before we start, if you're new around here, the way that I typically go through my Bible study with me is I will start off by reading the whole chapter and I will put little cards on the screen so you guys can read it with me. And then I will give you guys like the who, what, when, where, whys of the chapter. And then we will go ahead and dig in um, on like just like the verses that I felt called out to me or just whatever I feel spoke to me through this Bible study. Um, basically, it's really just a Bible study that I did on my own and I am sharing sharing it with you guys so we can do it together. So now let's read. Galatians 1, Paul, an apostle, not from men nor through man, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead, and all the brethren who are with me, to the churches of Galatia. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I still pleased men, I would not be a bondservant of Christ. But I make known to you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man, for I neither received it from man, nor was I taught it, but it came through the revelation of Jesus Christ. For you have heard of my former conduct in Judaism, how I persecuted the church of God beyond measure and tried to destroy it. And I advanced in Judaism beyond many of my contemporaries in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous for the traditions of my fathers. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me through grace, through his grace, to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the Gentiles, I did not immediately confer with flesh and blood. Nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me, but I went to Arabia and returned again to Damascus. Then, after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and remained with him fifteen days. But I saw none of the other apostles except James, the Lord's brother. Now concerning the things which I write to you, indeed, before God, I do not lie. Afterward, I went into the regions of Syria and Sicilia, and I was unknown by the face to the churches of Judea, which were in Christ. But they were hearing only, he who firmly persecuted us now preaches the faith which he once tried to destroy, and they glorified God in me. So now we're gonna go ahead and break down the chapter into main points, just to kind of get a lay of what we just read. So, starts off with a greeting to the people of Galatia from Paul. And then Paul addresses how he marvels at how soon they've turned away from the truth of the gospel. Um, then he moves on to know how there's one gospel and if anyone tries to twist, pervert, or change it, let him be accursed. Then he moves on to make the point of, who am I here to serve? Do I aim to please man or God? Which we're going to get into in a bit. And then he moves on to say, the gospel he preaches is not a story created by man of flesh, but given through revelation of Jesus. And then he moves on to even further that point, saying, you've heard my story. You think me, a guy who was murdering Christians, could have a heart change and come up with all of this by myself? Ha, no. And then he moves on to talk about his journey with his beginning of apostleship. And then it was on to say how he was unknown by face to the people of Judea, or at least, yes, by face to the churches of Judea who were in Christ, and how it was his testimony pretty much and hearing about him and the changes the Lord did in his life that glorified God. So what I want to really focus in on just for a little bit, and I'm going to read that again just so we are all on the same page. Galatians 1 9, as we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I pleased men, I would not be a bondservant of Christ. Galatians 1 6 and 7, he says, I marvel that you are turning away so so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. So the problem wasn't they were converting to a completely different new faith and turning away from the gospel. No, the problem is that they were twisting and perverting and changing the truth of the gospel. And so I, this is what I just felt like was spoken to me and even in my life and something that I think I've seen a lot, um, is that we want the Bible 
to be easy to swallow and easy to chew and something that we are like yeah behind all the time but the bible is the bible's not an easy thing and it's not always very pretty um and i think this is an excellent reminder that the truth is the truth for a reason and when we try and twist the truth and change it to make it easier to swallow or more acceptable to culture and more acceptable um, to where we feel more comfortable with it, we are then aiming to please man rather than aiming to please God. And this is something that I think is always a good reminder. When you read the Bible, it's not always gonna feel good. Like sometimes you're gonna read something and you're like, that's messed up. Or you're gonna think about like, why did God do that? Like, I don't understand that. And it's not that he's not good because he is good, but it's that we we don't fully understand um, the context and the culture and his intention and we don't fully understand God because we are a flesh you know while we are made new when we come to Christ we are still in our fleshly bodies you know we haven't been completely enlightened to the way God thinks yet and so we read our Bibles trying to learn more about him and the way he thinks and the way he loves but we're, we're never gonna be all there to totally understand everything that he does and why everything Everything is the way that it is and this kind of leads us into Paul's next point in Galatians 1 10 which says for do I not persuade men or God or do I seek to please men for if I please men I would not be a bronze servant of Christ and when we start to sugarcoat the Bible and twist it and change it and make it just a little bit easier to swallow we are moving away from our aim to please God and be a servant of God and now we are shifting closer to being a servant of men and of flesh and of our earthly tendencies and so it's just it's an easy thing that can happen and it's something that I didn't really realize or like it's a good thing to be reminded of regularly that like the Bible's hard sometimes and sometimes not everything's gonna feel good but we need to dig in deeper and get to know our God more and more so we can understand him better um, so that we don't feel the need to sugarcoat things because once we start sugarcoating that's when we are pleasing men more than God and God needs to be at that top and that's something that I really need to hear because I know that I'm definitely somebody who like I love to make friends I want people to like me and I am very afraid well not very afraid but like I am bracing for backlash because I know it's gonna happen someday and so I even like with my Bible study with me I'm like okay what book of the Bible is not gonna have a controversial topic that's gonna make people hate me and I'm not called to do that you know we are called to preach the truth and if we preach a changed version or preach any other gospel than what has been preached then I am serving men and I'm not serving God and so this is an excellent reminder to me and it's something that I know I needed to hear in just being bold in truth and being bold in truth and in love and knowing that the Bible is not easy and it, it's not our it's not meant to make us feel good it's meant to change us and it's meant to make us more like him and that doesn't happen without some refinement and some reading and digging and getting to know him and just getting dirty and really digging into the bible to really try and understand why things are the way that they are and knowing that we're not going to understand everything but just because we don't understand it or we don't like it doesn't mean it's not the truth and um the truth is what needs to be preached. And so that's just a good reminder to me just to make sure that my aim is always to serve God in everything. And I can only serve God if I am completely 100% devoted to him and devoted to who he is and his word and his truth in all of its perfection and knowing that it is perfect and that I should not be sugarcoating it because once I start sugarcoating it, we twist it and we change it in ways that fit what our flesh desires and what our earthly state wants but we are called to live according to the truth and to live according to his ways and not according to the flesh really that was what spoke to me the most out of this chapter but something else that really like got to me right at the end was just the power of testimony and i've talked about this multiple times on my channel um but i just think it's amazing how paul make paul mentions like 
you you know who I am like you've heard of me you know I'm not I was not the greatest guy I was not anybody's first pick to be preaching or um, for apostleship or to be sharing the word of God but here we are because God chooses broken people and why because it literally says they were hearing only who who formerly persecuted us now preaches the faith which he once tried to destroy and they glorified God in me so that is just a constant reminder to me of how important um, being open in our flaws and being open in the ways that we are broken and sharing that unashamedly because you know that the blood of Christ covers it and you are free from it but still there's so much power in sharing the ways you are broken and because when people see the things that God is doing through broken people it just glorifies him even more with that that is all for galatians 1 it was just a quick little read through i just wanted to share that with you guys honestly i prefer when they're quicker like that just because it's just simple and i'm just sharing with you guys what i felt spoke to me and what i need to work on myself and so primarily it was that first point of like not sure coding the bible and understanding that like the truth is hard um but as we get to know god better the truth may can become easier to understand but even if it isn't the truth is truth and um his word is good and his word is perfect yesterday today and tomorrow and when i believe that and i preach the truth i am serving him and if i try to change it i'm serving man which is not the way we are called to walk so thank you guys for joining me in this bible study with me i love you guys and i will see you guys next time bye